Hey, I'm Cece Summers, and welcome back to making me super uncomfortable. <laughs> this game has no save function. So I have to go do all of that again. <laughs> so uh, I will go catch up to where we were, and uh, I'll see you in a second. Oh, right, the yogurt minigame. Okay. I know I said I was going to make all the same choices as I did the first time, but I want to try this minigame again. <laughs> And see if I can get it right this time. The first time I went based off of fun, colorful, primary colors. And I was like, this is like super vibrant and bright and childish. And maybe you'd like it. But now I'm thinking I need to go with like a healthier option. Because he's really into health food. Right? I'm going to try that. Okay, so what kind? Do you think he'd like coffee? I don't know. Let's... Let's try it. Something nice and refined. It's popular with sucker moms looking to pretend they're still on that diet they told all their friends about. Let's go with that. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say rum sauce. But he didn't like cotton candy either, so maybe... Or no, we tried strawberry last time, I think. But I... I think strawberry's the best choice. Out of... Cotton candy and rum? I think so. Okay. Let's try cashews. Cashews are healthy. Nuts are weird. They go great with sweet and savory things because they're salty. But cashews are especially weird. Ian used to eat them on pizzas, if I recall correctly. Ian's a fucking monster. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's see if he likes it. Here you go, Jack. It's a very adult uh, cup of yogurt. Hey, that looks pretty good. You're goddamn right. Okay, yogurt god. I believe you, son. Yeah, shut. Eat. All right, I trust you. Let's see how you did. Eat the yogurt. <laughs> you it, bitch. It's... Interesting. I'm trying again. <laughs> okay, maybe we just need to do like fully adult. Like you're an adult. We'll do all the adult stuff. Cashews are licorice. Licorice is disgusting. I'm not trying to make it disgusting. But cashews are still adult. Try cashews. All right, let's see what he thinks. Hey, that looks pretty. All right, I... try it. Shut, shut up and eat it. All right, I trust. Did I do it? Is it good? He takes a bite and immediately seems to freeze. Not in a good way. In a looks like he's about to vomit way. I guess it wasn't good. Did he spit it out? He actually spat it out. Very delicately, he removes the spoon from his mouth and sets the cup down. Jack? He turns away without looking at me. Jack, I'm... I'm sorry, was it really that bad? He looks pale, almost haunted. Jesus, I didn't think it would be that bad. <laughs> Terrified of something. Yeah, you're not that person anymore. You're better than that now. You can be whatever you want to be. But nobody has to know. You're clean now. The fuck does that mean? Jack, what are you talking about? Uh, nothing. N nothing at all, Sunspot. Uh, 
I'm fine and dandy lemon candy. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Peachy keen jelly bean. <laughs> I think it was the rum sauce. I think it broke him. <laughs> I just... Wow, that's a lot of flavors. He seems like he wants to move on. I don't know what I did, but I wish I hadn't done it. I take it I don't get the prize, then. Hmm, not this time. But there's always a next time, right? Would he trust me to make him yogurt ever again? <laughs> okay, so not that one. said that they remind it reminds them of Jack okay and then they said that the licorice looks like his belt so it's like the yogurt you clown bitch hey i believe you all right i trust you let's see how you did yay <laughs> finally <laughs> i was way too invested in that wow that's really good you're goddamn right it is. It is? It is, because I am the yogurt god. Yeah, I love it. You did fantastic. Fuck yeah. He takes another bite. I won't lie, it looks good. And he's having fun. I'm a little bit curious now. What's my prize, bitch? Jack seems to take notice. Oh, right. I owe you a prize now, don't I? Yes, you do. Yep, hand it over. Well, I don't know. It's not really something I can hand to anyone. If it's aggressive positivity, I'm going to aggressive punch you in the throat. What does that mean? Well, I'll give it to you. If you close your eyes. Done and done. I close my eyes. That prize will be mine. I feel a gloved thumb softly graze my chin and move up to my lips. I feel myself jolt to full attention as his presence comes closer. I don't even need to see him. His warmth radiates as far as it needs to to convey his proximity. What I could not anticipate was him gently prying open my mouth. I don't try and fight it, no, but my cheeks to my ears are boiling hot. Don't fuss too much, okay? I wouldn't want to make a mess. I brace myself and receive a spoonful of yogurt in return. What? Seriously? Is that it? Come on, Jack, that's not... Crap. I bump his hand and the spoon gets knocked to the side, smearing my mouth with frozen yogurt residue. Ugh! Oh, I told you not to fuss. Don't worry, we can fix this. Sit still, okay? I stay still. A warm kiss beads the corner of my mouth. Then another one, and another one. I almost falter, breathless, as I'm peppered with small kisses. Then a fuller, deeper one. I reach for Jack's wrists, clinging to them absently. I don't know if I want to push him away or hold him closer, but... I taste him. I feel him stretching into my mouth, filling... Uh, uh, gross. 
It felt so warm and gentle, yet hungry to invade my mouth and share in this explosion of flavors. Ew. My head was dizzy and spinning as Jack finally pulled away, but not before leaving one more sweet peck on my lips. I could feel the curl of his smile. At that point, I couldn't keep my eyes closed much longer. That wasn't supposed to happen. I guess it worked out in the end, though. He seems a bit bashful himself now. That's the prize? That's seriously the prize. I got fucking gypped. The amount of goddamn time I spent trying to come up with this stupid <laughs> yogurt, and that's my prize. All I can do is look away nonchalantly, face in hand. Right. Some prize. You didn't like it? No. I never said that. Good. A quiet complacency hangs in the air. Almost dreamy. Almost fuzzy and flustered. I'm reminded of my first kiss in high school. My stomach is light and airy like a bubble, but doing flips as well. My thoughts are interrupted by a customer at the door. Oh boy, here we go. Alright, so I think that's the... Yeah. Okay, we're gonna catch up now. Thank God we can fast forward through a lot of this dialogue because I did not want to watch that scene again. <laughs> so it is the morning after that scene. We're all caught up. Blech. The sun is back with a vengeance. It jabs through my eyelids like a crowbar, not causing them to open, but disturbing my sleep. That and those damn birds are back, chirping and being all cheery and shit. Ugh. Fuck it. I don't want to move. I'm utterly exhausted anyways, and warm. And for once, it's not because of blankets or a heater or the sun. I feel Jack's arm strewn over me, heavy and muscular as it is. He doesn't even need to hold on to me. He'd be able to keep me here like that. But he holds on tightly anyways. I can feel his bare chest moving against mine. His legs sandwiched between mine just like mine is between his. I don't think you can get any closer with someone. It's almost silly to be like this with him. He's asleep, I gather. Can he even sleep? He's not moving, and he's not waking me up. But I don't need to check. I'm not ready to open my eyes just yet. Let me stay here with him forever. I have a feeling that's not going to be a problem for him. <laughs> uh, of course. Or not. Yep, that's the front door. At this point, reality has set in. Reluctantly, I sit up. Or do my best to. Jack clings onto me like a child. Where are you going? That is a- that is a naked man. That is a naked ass man. <laughs> Away from it's... you. He still got his goddamn gloves on. He is fully naked. He has the clown gloves on his hands still. <sighs> it's still pretty early, isn't it? Yeah, but that might be something important. I guess. He sits up with me. Oh god, he's just... Yep, he is definitely still naked. Albeit, the, the gloves are on. Something about seeing him this way during the day is very different. He stays in bed while I go to throw on my pajamas. I don't bother with the undergarment portions. This might be just the male guy after all. He looks a little sleepy still. Aww. I'll be back, okay? He yawns and stretches and nods. Mm, of course. Yeah, I'll be here. I leave him to his own devices, gunning through the kitchen and to the front door. Why is he pretending as if he sleeps? You know that he was awake that whole time, and then as soon as he noticed that we were awake, he was like, oh, 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 I gotta, I gotta, I'm asleep. Don't worry about it. Bitch, I know you don't sleep. I know you don't fucking sleep. Ghost ass bitch. I'm coming! 
I shout through the door, swinging it open without a second thought. It's about time. Is that my boss? Oh, shit. Sean? Yeah? Who else? Who is Sean? He stands there coolly, a duffel bag, a plastic carrier, and backpack in tow. Don't worry. I got most of my stuff in storage. I just need a few things. I'm in the middle of a production, so I couldn't put everything away. Right, right. Who is Sean? Who are you? I completely forgot I said Sean could stay with me for a bit while he looks for a place in my area. And he was supposed to be coming today. Jesus Christ, I fucked that up. Hey, you okay? You look like you're about to fall asleep on me. Fuck. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, I, I just woke up. Sorry. You didn't forget I was coming today, did you? No, of course not, Sean. Jeez. Nice to know you're still a total space case, huh? Your, your mom is a total space case. I like how your mesh shirt goes all the way down, though. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure if I'm digging this Ed Hardy t-shirt. <laughs> he laughs it off like it's nothing. Thank God. Listen, seriously, thanks for helping me out here. I promise, I've already got showing set up, and I'll be doing a lot of shooting during the day, so... Hopefully, I'll be gone most of the day, too. I'll be out of your hair in no time. I don't know how to casually say that he's welcome in my hair whenever he wants for as long as he wants. <laughs> he's probably the best roomie I'd ever had. But also... Oh, is there a kitty? The plastic carrier Sean is carrying stirs as he sets it down cautiously on the couch. Meow. <laughs> oh, little baby. You're all shook up, huh? It's okay, Daddy's still here. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Sean coaxes out a little gray cat from the carrier. Sean's always had a thing for cats, but had always cautioned against getting one. He didn't want to until he knew he had the time and money to support one. Little Moon Pie was his personal triumph in that regard, and I remember hearing all about it when he first brought her home. She was blind, but she was chatty, and she was soft. Are you sure your landlord doesn't mind? I know this is all super sudden, but I don't want you to get in trouble for my sake. Just as long as your cat doesn't pee on my stuff. Nah, she should be fine. You just make sure to get her a proper litter box later. I draw the line at sharing poop duty, see? Great minds. <laughs> damn. Fair, but also, damn. Moon Pie pitters out and gets to sniffing around. Sean gives her a head pat, but otherwise lets her start exploring. As her fuzzy little butt disappears behind a corner, I lean against the doorway for support. So, besides the cat, what else is new? You, uh, still trying to do that one horror movie you were telling me about? Sean scoffs teasingly as he unzips one of his bags and begins rifling through it. <coughs> um, I have several. You're going to have to be more specific. My brain is still not fully functioning as I retrieve the context necessary to process what he's saying to me. Right. I was degree hopping around that time, but Sean was going in for film, wasn't he? Sean and I went to college together, but he actually had a passion for his degree. We hung out a lot, especially when Ian first moved away and things got a bit lonely. But then, one of his short films got popular online. He started making movies, and now, well, he does it for a living. That's badass. Good job, Sean. And that's as much context as I can process right now. I'm tired and sans caffeine. Dude, I feel like ten butts right now. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Well, hey, that makes two of us. I just got off an eight-hour plane ride. <laughs> I'm just better at pretending to be human than you. I guess so. <laughs> it's true. He is. I one time saw him pull an all-nighter, then get up and head to class in the same clothes as the day before. Ew. Then he bought me lunch. Like I was the one who needed it. Maybe it's because you watch all that horror stuff. How do I even know that you don't watch those as examples of what not to do? That's just the thing. 
You don't! <laughs> okay, I love this guy. <laughs> I stifle a laugh as he chokes to death, then resumes his act. He faints onto the couch, clutching his chest dramatically. Ah, uh, but being an immortal creature of the night comes at a price. A hefty price. What? Like, your soul? Actually, more like a cortado, three vanilla bean scones, and a panini. <laughs> and you have to eat half the panini because I'm not feeling a whole panini. But I'll feel bad if I have to throw it away. Oh, so like, 1367? <laughs> yes, because you forgot I was coming. Yes. I mean, fair. I feel like that's a fair trade-off. Wow, immortality sure is cheap. Remind me why anyone bothers looking for the Holy Grail? Beats me. Lack of originality. Lazy writers. We both laugh some more about it. God, this is... It's like old times. It's refreshing. How are you holding up? Oh, you know. Just hallucinating a clown man and having sex with him. I wonder how weird that would have looked if someone were to have walked in. <laughs> because I can't, I don't know what other people perceive of him. Like, I don't know if this is a situation where it's just like he's invisible. So like, if he picks something up, do people see that? Does he like take up space? Like if he puts the blanket over himself, do you just see the blanket in the air? Or is this just her perceiving the things going this way but really she's doing it herself like she's like oh jack put his hand on my cheek but really it's her like putting her own hand on her own cheek i need to know more of the lore of this game <laughs> what do you mean after you know ian you uh ever figure that out I know things got really busy all of a sudden, and I've missed you. Aww. But, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being silly about it. I really should have been there more for you. Yeah, because maybe then we would have been dating Sean and not a crazy clown man from the 80s. Aw, dude, don't say that. You were doing so well. You had your dream come true. Who cares about a little petty gossip? It's not petty gossip. It's important to you and you're important to me Aww. I'm sorry I left you here to deal with this and I don't care if you care or not I want to make it up to you while I'm here his sincerity rings true but beyond his tone this was the guy who held me when I cried had couch sleepovers with me when I refused to sleep in my big bed alone he was the only one I had back then Oh no. His pupils dilate. His trademark kitty face. Please. Sean, wait, don't do this. But you've given me so many ear scritches. What? I just want to give you one in the heart. Oh my god. <laughs> Shit. Do I know anybody who isn't fucking crazy? Is is he purring? I can't do this. I cannot fight the urge. When he opens his arms, I grab the goth butter ball and scoop him up. Or try to. He does most of the scooping. And with that, the duo is reunited. Thanks for coming. No matter why you came. Thank you. You're welcome. Forever and always. Aww. Who's this? That's it? Oh no. Something's gonna happen to Sean. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Well, okay, so we still had a couple of choices that we did not make, mostly like the not leaning into. Yeah, 
not leaning into like the whole dating thing, not leaning into like kissing him or saying he's our boyfriend or whatever. So I'll do that and see if we can get any other information from this. I told you. <laughs> I knew that bitch took over our body and just went ham. I didn't know it would be on poor yogurt shop guy, but I knew it would be on someone. I figured it would be on Ian, but fuck that guy for asking me if I had a boyfriend, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's... What is this? What is that? What does afterlife mean? May 25th, 2000, and we don't know. I was on box number 15, and thank God I was, because I was just about to lose all hope. The move had been spotty, yes. Somewhere in our youthful naivety, Ian and I had decided it was no longer necessary to each own a separate car. It'll save us on gas, we said. It'll be our shared baby, we said. It'll mean less insurance bills, we said. But when push came to shove, and we needed this car to pull through now more than ever. It didn't have enough trunk space to fit even half of Ian's things in it. Fast forward five trips to and from the college, boxing up my things and driving them to our new apartment, and then doing the same for all of his. That was horrible, and we both agreed to never do it ever again. <laughs> but 15 boxes into unpacking all that, the driving back and forth was beginning to feel like the easy part. I stank. Like, I could feel a musk-like aura around me. I was so sweaty, I was having flashbacks to the day my fifth grade PE teacher had to take me aside and teach me what deodorant was. <laughs> my knees were sore, my legs were numb. The carpet had taken to imprinting its woven texture into my flesh. I'd been down there so long. I honestly probably could have really used a break and a shower, but having everything in such disarray was keeping me from being able to relax. Bubble wrap and tape, boxes torn into pieces or kicked in for funsies. And somewhere in this mess, there was a box cutter on the floor. But I had no idea where it was at this point, so that was just going to have to be a fun surprise to find later. <laughs> it's my favorite game, find the box cutter. I didn't think it was this possible to be so tired and sickly and stuffy and ready to explode. I needed some breathing room. I needed just a little space. Hey, hey. Cece? Pizza's here. I keep doing that. I'm sorry. I'm so used to reading it all. Oh, thank God. Ian? I don't think I'd ever been so quick in my life standing up. Sorry, I got thrown off by the, the, the orange hair. I do not trust this man. Like, I already know he's garbage because obviously we don't like him and he ruined our lives. But, orange hair. Don't trust any of them. Don't trust blondes. Don't trust redheads. If he turns into a fox, I'm quitting. <laughs> if I moved like that in high school, I definitely would have made track for sure. Yes. Yes. Oh God, it's about time. Easy now. It's still hot. Because who has two 
thumbs and got there just in time for them to run out. So then they had to go make an entirely new fresh one just for him. Yay! <laughs> this, this guy! <laughs> <laughs> Careful. The cheese is really hot. Plates are in the bag. Ian sets down a big box of pizza that's already grease soaked enough to feel like the heavy disc of cheese and sauce inside will fall through the bottom at any second. Ew. Fuck yes. I was about to literally eat my shirt. I open the box and a wave of heat and cheese smell floods outwards. It's golden and glorious. Don't you think we're like No such thing. Ian grabs a slice after I do, and we both begin the race to see who can down the most molten grease the fastest. I feel like maybe we should be past this phase. What about trying a combination pizza next time? Ew, and put vegetables on it? Disgusting. Monster. Wait, this bitch likes to eat cashews on his pizza. Fucking goblin. I, I'm not taking pizza advice from you. Weird man. <laughs> Okay, but with all those toppings on top, you don't get the baked cheese top. Right. Right. Almost as if to demonstrate my point about the superiority of cheese pizza, he takes a long, stringy bite that stretches what looks to be a half a foot long. And? It's in that moment that I can't help but think. There's really no place I'd rather be. Growing up, there weren't too many options for best friends. For one reason or another, the flighty and unfocused minds of toddlers who'd shown up to Miss Grigham's first grade class didn't seem too interested in developing deep, meaningful friendships. The only one who seemed to want a friend was the kid who never seemed to have any. That was Ian. Ian wasn't particularly loud and didn't have cool clothes or toys. He just kind of faded into the background. A lot of kids made fun of him. But in the end, that only made him an even better friend once I got to know him. He was a nerd, and he was silly, and he was very apologetically himself. But what we had was special. And it still is. Here we were, years and years down the line, getting an apartment together, going to college together. I could spend the rest of my life like this. Are you all right? Peachy keen, jelly bean. I snap out of my blissful trance. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm all right. You're totally spacing on me. Is everything okay? Oh, of course. Of course. No, I was just thinking about how nice this is all going to be. You really think so? I know so. Why, are you regretting it? If you change your mind later, I won't be upset. But I, I, I really hope that this isn't uh, too weird. Bitch. Why would it be weird? I mean, like, I'm not going to do anything fucking weird. It's him that's going to be the weird one. We're a thing, right? Like, a couple? I've known you since you were still wetting the bed. Hey, that's not even fair. You know, I just have a really small bladder. Is this half of a, um, a friendship necklace? Like, are we wearing one that's the other half of this heart? My point is, nothing you could do would be weird. And I'm hoping nothing I could do would be weird either. Ian pauses and gives a downcast glance at the floor. Well, well isn't it sinful? Sinful. 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 Why would this be sinful? I, I just worry, okay? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being... 
Ugh, garbage. Kick him to the curb. Ian. His face doesn't just fall. It falls through the floor. My mom called me. Mm. There we go. Gave her our address, or she might have had one of her friends watching. I don't know. That would explain the weirdness. I got you. She said she says that to live with someone out of wedlock it, it's a sin. And I'm going to hell. Yeah, well, your mom can suck it. She said, I'm only doing it to, to satisfy uh, my, my manhood. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm not taking advantage of you by doing this, am I? No. Normally, under any other circumstances, I'd tell someone what they wanted to hear. But I know Ian. So I cut out the middleman and just hold him. I hold on to him tight, like he's going to run away or melt or fall if I don't. He holds me back after a while. Promise me that. That you want this too? I know she's just being mean, but... I love you. I just... What is it with these men making me say things out loud? I say what I want to say. You just get over it. I love you, Ian. And if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here. He clings to me even more. Like, why? Like, why do- why? I just need to hear you say it. Both of them. Garbage. Garbage. How about they get together? And then they can just sit there and tell each other that they love each other. All day. Ian has a bit of a cry, but after that we block his mother's phone number and move on. We have as much pizza as we can stomach, but after a while the delicious, savior-like qualities of the pizza turn into dairy overload and we call it quits. Should be. Although I did find one other box of yours mixed in. Another one? Uh, I don't remember having any others. My room is pretty much set up now and nothing seems missing. Hmm. Well, it was in your dorm, so it's gotta be yours. I bring Ian to a small box sitting among the refuse and remains of my unpacking spree. Kneeling down, Ian pulled the strip of tape sealing the box away and opened it up. This is. <laughs> this is Momanga. Damn. And I just got my shelves all situated too. <laughs> that checks out. Ian flips through a few of them. They're a mix of matte covers with doggy ear corners and glossy, almost laminated covers that look brand new. It'll be nice to put all these out in the open. No more hiding. My little victory dance, you know? This is our home. Nobody can tell us what to do anymore. He was right. He'd had to keep that stuff with me or read it in the library before. Dirty picture books, his mom called them. But now he was finally free to enjoy all that stuff. Ian placed the books back into the box and closed it up again. In my room with these bad boys. <laughs> or girls. Girls? Books. <laughs> I stifle a chuckle as Ian heaves and hoes the box upwards, and we make a single file line trek to his room. So they're a couple, but they have different rooms. Ian sets the box down on his bed and begins unloading it in brick-like stacks. So I guess... 
I guess that's just the religious aspect of it, that he doesn't want to share a bedroom. You think? Austere challenger tribulation is an A, so that'll be easy. Solution of the reckless is on a pretty full shelf, though. Th that's the S's. So, uh, I'll have to move the entire shelf one down. He thoughtfully studies his bookshelf with the intensity of an archaeologist studying the hieroglyphics. I sit there and look at the pretty pictures in the books. There's a few nice ones and a few that I'm not too interested in. A lot of these date f so far back, I'm getting flashbacks. Glomping, yaoi paddles, those cookie sticks that you bought because they were cute to take pics with even though they weren't all that satisfying. I have to stop myself from visibly cringing when one of the books mentions those felt cat ear hats that everyone in school had to have at some point. <laughs> I continue to pick through as he carefully splices each addition into his collection. Huh. Honey trumpet? I fish out a book featuring a tall, handsome boy with glasses. He's not muscle bound and he's kind of a bean pole, but from my experience, that's what constitutes unattractive in these. He's holding on to what I can only assume is a blushing love interest in tight clothing. I jump right into the middle of the... Oh, wow. Hey, you all right? <laughs> Guess they're dirty picture books after all. Before I know it, the book is gone. Ian is clutching the book in his arms, looking red as a tomato. It, is that porn? It's, it's, it's not porn. Technically, it's etchy. And, and you weren't supposed to see that. Okay, I had to look that up because... Uh, I'm an old person, and I don't know what that means. But basically, it just means it's not as strong as hentai. It's the Japanese pronunciation of the letter H, the first letter in the word hentai. Okay. So, like, soft porn. Shit. This is what I was talking about. I, I, I didn't mean to make it weird. I promise. I picked up on the side. That's all it's... At this point, I can't help but peer into the box again. Scantily clad characters sit in provocative poses, cover to cover. There's not much left in there at this point, but that's at least a dozen. <laughs> so that's a lot of porn. There's almost a crack to his voice reminiscent of days past. Ian grabs the box off the bed and shoves the book in it promptly. These are mostly Gojin sheep. Fan comics. You get them because you like the main series and that's it. That's it. That's all you would get. Those four. That's all. He looks at me almost offended. It's definitely porn. <laughs> All right, so if it's not porn, can I see more? I was still looking at those. What? No! I'm shelving these, uh, and you can read them later. Once they're on the shelf. When I'm done. How do I know you aren't going to just put them under your bed or something? It's not porn. So why would I put them under my bed? Because it's porn. <laughs> He's so mad. Wait, wait. What do you mean under my bed? What are you doing under my bed? Looking for your porn. Ah, that's my cue to leave. Hey! Don't just run away. Uh, uh, come on. Don't be a jerk. I flee the scene of the crime, giggling like I'm a kid again. 
I'm being serious. You're not going under my bed, are you? <laughs> That's a violation of my privacy. You don't know what I keep down there. I know there's porn. <laughs> How do I tell him I was bluffing? I run into my room and immediately go to hide. The last place he'd look would be behind the door, so I make the hardest U-turn of my life and pull the door as over me as possible. Ian follows after, but doesn't seem to pay any mind to me from my advantageous position. I may just be safe yet. <laughs> gotcha! Ian bulldozes me, coming in like a freight train and plowing the two of us directly onto the bed. A giggling, laughing, flailing mess of people. I try and push him off. I try to get my own leverage. I think he tries a chokehold, but I lick a long, wet stripe down his arm. Ew. <laughs> He sits back on the bed and dries his arm on the blankets on his lap. What are you? Five? <laughs> I only blow a raspberry at him, and the two of us collapse in laughter. Chest heaving from the exchange, I let my hand find his and hold it gingerly. FYI, I've never been under your bed. I just know that's a cliché porn mag hiding spot for guys who still buy paper porn. Of the porn arts, it's fine. Call it what it is, though. We both laugh again. He seems less upset about it all now. We lay in silence, staring at the ceiling for a sweet and calm moment. So for real, are we going to talk about this? What there is to talk about? Part of me wonders if he's genuinely upset, but another half of me feels like he may have been really hiding things from me. And if it's something like sexy maids and cat people, I can handle that. But if he feels like he needs to hide things from me, I don't want him to have to live like that. Look, I don't care what you do in your free time, so long as you're not seeing anyone else or something. You know I'd never do that. Why do I feel like he did that? I know, I'm talking about... Whatever kind of stuff you like, you don't have to hide it. He shifts uncomfortably next to me on the bed. I squeeze his hand. I know. Deep down, I know. Can I be honest? He fidgets more. That stuff. It's really not what you think it's for. Mm-hmm. For sure, Ian. Absolutely. Just you. Other people are weird. I don't know them. But I love you. And I love doing things with you. Ew. He blushes and fidgets with his hands. He really is just such a squirrely bundle of nervousness. I wrap him in my arms and nuzzle into his torso. I could hear a sharp inhale afterwards and felt the relaxing of his body as he slowly got comfortable in the embrace. I felt him melt into me. It's not like this is the first time I've done this with him. Growing up, we got used to holding each other letting each other ride out the worst of whatever we were feeling. It was almost cute how he still needed me like this. But I'd also be lying if I said I wasn't fond of this myself. You okay? Yeah, I, I think I am. He shifts his weight, pressing against me. It's cozy against him, and I'd be content to stay like this forever. Until I feel something, uh-oh. 
Is that a wad of blanket? Something left on the bed? Probably not. Reaching a, <laughs> reaching a hand down, I tried to adjust whatever that was. Must be his wallet or... Oops. Ian yelps. Oh, shoot. Sorry. There's something in the sheets, I think. Let me see. I fu <laughs> Quit touching it. It's fine. It's probably just a shirt or something. Here, shift over and... Ian seized, almost like a jolt of electricity had shot up his spine. Poor guy. <laughs> no, I swear to God, there's something here. <laughs> Me and him squirmed more on the bed. The sheets were so messed up at this point. Was it a wallet or something? Maybe he knew what it was. I've touched his wallet plenty of times, and... Ian grips my shoulders tightly, whimpering softly into my ear. Ian? Ian, are you okay? I was trying to tell you. Oh. <laughs> Ian averts his gaze. Shit. We've all been there. It's fine. Should I ruin this? You want me to go? For anyone else, this might be a tad awkward, but... He's not just anyone else. No. Stay. I don't know. <laughs> you don't tell anyone about this, do you? About what? What? No, I've never told a soul. That's just between you and me. Good. Not that it's a, a secret or, or anything, but... This poor guy got so fucked up by his mom. <laughs> Do you want me to stop? No way. As if to emphasize his point. Yikes. <laughs> Just please don't make fun of me if I make a weird noise or something. You always make weird noises. This is nothing different. <laughs> He gave a whine, having given in, since he can't exactly rebuttal what I said. It's true. He just wears his heart on his sleeve like that. What? Am, am I too much? All of this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> this is so amazing. I really love you. <laughs> That's over. He seems much less tense than before. I didn't need to wonder why. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't too rough with you, was I? Not really. I didn't mind it, I guess. I pat the bed and Ian follows like a puppy, snuggling up with me under beneath the covers. He's shy about a lot of things, but affection isn't one of them at the moment. You know, the only person I want is you. Don't you? He kisses my forehead gently before nestling in for what will probably turn out to be a nap for the both of us. Right. Forever. I couldn't be happier. Okay, so I kind of wonder what happens when we make the different choices. I'm gonna do that. Okay. So last time we did this one, but maybe we're just kind of like, mm, maybe not, homie, maybe not. 
we're not, I don't want it to be weird. I suddenly don't want to do anything but be one with his warmth. I fall against him, clinging to his shirt under his vest. He chuckles as I exhale deeply, my mind drifting into this blissful state of existence. Why does this remind me of something so intimate? Part of me feels like I'm inches away from touching his heart with mine. Do hours pass? Do days? I can see the sunlight through my eyes and all I know is everything feels golden and pure. I could stay like this forever. How did I come to know Jack again? It's so odd when I lay it all out. This hallucination of mine is holding me, making me feel so good. It can't not be real, right? If it wasn't, I think I might have cried. I wanted him to be there, to be real. I needed him so bad. You know, there are lots of ways to stay with someone forever, don't you? Huh? I never have to leave if you don't want me to. And if you didn't want me to, I don't think I'd ever go. Quit doing that. <laughs> I want to open my eyes to assess the situation, maybe read his face, but I don't. You make me feel something special. You make me feel... love. Platonic. Love. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> his embrace grows not tighter, but more resolved. Possessive, even. I feel the gold on my fuzzy mind fade into something grayer, colder, almost more distant. My first instinct is to seek him out again. They won't understand it, but they don't need to. The world is so busy, they'll forget all about you. I never want that for you. I finally open my eyes. So I won't. Won't what? You won't what? <laughs> I won't ever forget you. I'll never leave you, okay? And in return, please don't forget about me. Okay. He smiles, but it's so sad, maybe even desperate. I shake my head. I won't. I won't forget about you, I promise. That seems to put him at ease. I rest myself in his arms once more, but the way he holds me is ginger. It's like he's afraid I'll crumble to dust or break. And there's the boss, right on cue. All right, so far everything is the same. So this time I'm gonna tell that guy that I don't have a boyfriend. See what happens, cause I told him that I did have a boyfriend and Jack still murdered his face off, so. Let's see what happens when I tell him I don't. <laughs> oh poop, I hope that we don't kiss. Maybe I should have done the bad one. Hut, all right, I tr I he guess it worked me. out in the- Hang on, I want to go back and give him the flashback one. <laughs> okay. Made the... War flashback. Cup of yogurt. Don't kiss me, Jack. Huh? Alright. There he goes. <laughs> You're cool, Jack. It's Nothing cool. Nothing at all, Sunspot. Yeah, we're fine. Everything is fine. It's fine. Let's go tell that guy we don't have a boyfriend. I'm fine and dandy lemon candy. You still work here? Sure do. Ask me on a date. You can say yes if you want. I don't I want don't to. Mind. Think about, do you, if you want, it doesn't even have to be a lot. Uh -huh. I'll be whatever nah, I did good. promise. No, 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 because you're a crazy ghost man. Nah, I don't have a boyfriend. No, no, this isn't how it needs to come out. Not like this. No, but I'm not really looking for that right now anyways. Yes, I am. Date rogue. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Ah, I thought we were going to tell him that we're good, like we could go on a date. He has a cute little striped shirt. And he's real. I don't know what got into me. 
He seems to wilt, looking crestfallen, but doing his best to hide it. Jack, I... you know I didn't... Shit. I didn't push that on you, did I? I mean, you kind of did. I didn't mean to. Really, I really thought... He furrows his brows like he's retracing his steps, blaming himself, trying to see where it all went wrong. I reach out to touch him. Jack, I... My hand falls through. All right. Strange. I try again. My hand melts through his colorful image like it's passing through a cloud or smoke. No, no, it doesn't even seem to disturb his presence, even. I try for a third time to grab him, touch him, connect, but he pulls away, almost flinching. Jack? Wait, what's going on? He coughs and stammers over his words. I... <laughs> well, I... Jack, why can't I... you know... I'm your friend, right? I guess. And you know that you're very special to me. But because I'm your friend, there are certain things I can't do. Things I don't want to. And what that's that anything you don't want. All right, but what does that have to do with you disappearing? No, 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 I'm not disappearing. Promise, really. If you don't want me... Well, this is what happens. But it's okay. I'm fine. I'm still here. See? I'm not going anywhere. Is he really trying to reassure me? Now of all times? Jack, please, no, I didn't mean it. I paw at him once more, but he steps away from me. Hey, hey, shh. It's okay, all right? Don't worry. This isn't funny. I'm being serious. I know you are. But you really, really have to mean it. That's just something I can't do on my own. Damn it, Jack. I didn't mean for this to happen. If I had known it was going to happen, I would have said yes. It's so cold now, and I can't help but attribute that to him being gone. Why do I feel so alone? Why is he here, but I feel like he's not? Please. Jack, I want you. God, this feels so, like, manipulative. This feels very manipulative. Like, I don't know if I believe him. I don't know if I believe that he's, like, a fairy. And if you don't, if you say I don't believe in fairies, then they'd start dying. And just like that, I feel two strong arms wrap around me in a warm embrace. It's so safe and sturdy and comforting. A wave of relief washes over me as I cling to him for dear life. I'm sorry. I don't know whether to sob or swear, but however it comes out, he simply holds on tighter. I know. No, he doesn't. No, I really want you. I mean it. Don't ever do that again. Like I said, I never have to go if you don't want me to. I'll be here as long as you need me. Okay? All right, Mary Poppins. Just remember what you promised me. Don't forget me. Hard to forget. <laughs> I don't have the energy to reply after that. I feel drained. Tired. I don't say it, but I hope somehow he can tell. I never planned to. Ever. He could probably tell that you're tired because he stole your energy and is using it to keep himself alive. <laughs> that was close. Too close. <laughs> I thought I was doing everything right. Wasn't this all what you wanted? Or was I meant to be giving you more? I can do better. I will do better. You'll see how good I am for you. I can make you whole. You've just got to trust me. I emphatically do not. <laughs> okay. Or are you still upset about earlier? 
He looked at me and God did I hate that look on his face. Like a broken hearted puppy who was just afraid of being left behind. I know it's scary, I do, but you can trust me. I haven't done anything bad, have I? My first instinct is to say no, but something about me is paralyzed. There's almost a wavering desperation in his voice. Like he's had a premonition he's deathly afraid has just come true. Please. All I want is to do what's best for you. To be with you and protect you. Why, though? Why? He moves in closer, taking hold of me. It was tight. I could hardly move. God, did it feel so warm. I didn't want to pull away, but I knew I had to. He whispered to me and gave me kisses on my head. Why did it feel so good? Because he's a witch. All I ever want is to make you happy. I don't feel like that's true. That's all. That's what I'm here for. Just let me make you feel good. He sits me back onto the bed. My mind was swirling with thoughts as I tried my hardest to do something. But something never happened. I was suffocating in his embrace. Something about the air was thick and sticky. Like I was breathing cotton candy. Like I was under a spell. What I say? He kissed me again and... Wait. My eyes went wide as I realized he was pressing very firmly against me. Almost... <clears throat> gross. Jack! What? You know... I care about you so much. I really do. I want to see you smile. I want to do everything I can to make you happy. Please, can I do that? No. <laughs> Ew. No. Just that I'd begin to feel so powerless to him. It was so hard to say no to him. Jack, we... He kissed my cheek again. His hand sending shocks of ugh, gross, each gentle touch hazing my mind further. He didn't want to let me go. Please, my sunshine. No, ew, I get away from me. I can make you feel so good. I promise. Ew. Fuck out of here. No! He asked like he was afraid I'd change my mind at any second. I didn't even fight back. Jesus. Ah, oh, how could I? My mind was so clouded and his touch felt amazing. It always felt amazing. You don't need anyone else. You won't need anyone else. I'll make sure of it. He seemed to get more aggressive. Nipping at my neck, giving little bites here and there. It didn't hurt. It felt so... It, why would it feel good? I could only let out a small moan. Did I even want to hold back? Why? Because this isn't what you actually want. He's just a witch. <laughs> what was really wrong about this again? There's nothing wrong with this. With us. He's taking some part of me, infecting me with some kind of fever, some need. And I don't want to admit it but I want to surrender and let him. Cursed. <laughs> I care about you so much. Oh, sure. You see how well you're taking me? It feels good, right? Tell me it feels good. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you feel how much I care about you? We have something that no one else can ever replicate. Nobody could love you like this as much as I do. Oh, this guy is so abusive. <laughs> right? Our feelings are special, right? Like, damn, like this is textbook. Uh, okay. That's right. None of this is bad. Look at how good good you feel. Look at how much I can provide for you. 
He provides so much for me. He makes me feel safe, warm, happy. That's all I ever want for you. Accept me, please. No, we were going to say no. I gasp, being brought back into the moment. Ew. Part of me, a very small part of me, wanted to push him away. Please, don't, don't let me leave. Please let me stay with you. You know you want it. You know what you want to really say. All you have to do is say it, and I can be here forever for you. No! Oh my god! Uh, garbage. Garbage. Garbage man. Garbage. Was he talking? Was that in my head? I couldn't tell. I could only... I could only move my lips automatically. He's right. I do want it. Stay with me. Please don't leave me. I'm so, so happy to hear that sunshine. I won't leave you. I promise. I won't ever leave you. Forever. Just like you want. That is so ominous. <laughs> Why did his words bring me such comfort? I don't know. That was fucking ominous. <laughs> Why did I feel so much warmth in my body? Witchcraft. Is this because of how much he cares for me? Absolutely not. I guess what we have really is special. Just like the kind of relationship between a parasite and a host. So special. The parasite just really loves the host and needs them so much. For food. What up, Sean? What up, kitty cat? All right, well, that is going to be it for Something's Wrong with Sunny Day Jack. Something is absolutely wrong with this man. Oh, he gives me the willies. <laughs> but let me know if I missed anything. Um, I feel like that probably was it, but let me know if there's a anything I need to go back and check out. And I'm super excited to play the full game. Um, I think I saw that it's supposed to come out sometime in 2024, which makes me very sad. But, but when it comes out, I will absolutely be buying it and playing it. So hopefully it'll be sooner than that. But anyways, don't date people that uh, talk to you the way that he does because they are garbage people. <laughs> and maybe just don't date clowns that only you can see. That could also be a good rule of thumb. Don't talk to people that tell you that your love is the most special thing and no one can ever love you as much as they can and they need to hear you say that you love them. Don't date somebody like that. And also don't date anybody that nobody else can see. Whether they're a clown or not. If someone else can't see them, maybe don't date them. That's, that's my, uh, my two rules of survival. <laughs> but anyways, don't watch any VCRs that you find. Typically is not a good idea, is not a fun time. Just historically, The Ring, the movie, VHS, just all around not a good time. They're cursed. <laughs> Let's stick to DVDs and streaming services. And I'll see you later. All of my exes were crazy.